Hello, welcome back to the channel. This video will be the third part of the web app pen testing for Absolute Beginners course. Last time we looked at HTTP post requests, request body, and HTTP response. Here is that video in the info card if you haven't seen it. This time we will be covering the different types of encodings that are useful in a web application. Let's start by understanding what encoding is. Encoding in web applications is like putting information into a format that can be easily understood and processed by different parts of a system. It's not about making data secret, but more like ensuring everyone speaks the same language. Think of encoding as a universal translator for data in the world of web applications. It's not a security measure. It's a tool for compatibility. Imagine you and a friend speaking different languages. To communicate effectively, you might use a translator to convert your words into a language both of you understand. Encoding does something similar for data. Now let's explore the common encoding types that we need to understand for web applications. First, let's explore two essential concepts to get started. Hex and ASCII encoding. Now don't worry if these terms sound a bit technical, we're going to break them down into simple terms. Picture hex encoding as the way computers count, but in their own special language. Just like we count from 0 to 9, computers count from 0 to 15. Now, here's the twist. Instead of stopping at 9, they keep going and use letters from A to F. So, in computer counting, it looks like this. It's kind of like their numeric alphabet. When we use hex encoding, we're talking in this computer counting language. It might seem a bit unusual for us, but for computers, it's their way of making conversations more efficient. For example, the number 106 in our normal way of counting becomes 6a in hexadecimal. Now let's talk about ASCII. It stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It's like a universal translator for computers, assigning specific numbers to every character you can think of, letters, numbers, punctuation, you name it. For example, the letter A is represented by the number 65 in ASCII. ASCII encoding ensures that no matter what kind of computer or device is involved, they can all understand and agree on the same set of numbers for characters. For example, if I take this series of numbers and give it to any computer and tell it it's encoded in ASCII, it should know that will be decoded as the phrase InfoSec Mastery. Each number represents the ASCII value of the corresponding character in the string. For example, I is represented by 73, N by 78, and so on. Now, if we take a step further and encode each of those numbers in hexadecimal, it should look like this. If I give it to a computer and tell it it's hexadecimal encoded ASCII values, it should know that it will decode each pair of hexadecimals to the ASCII. So 4e in hexadecimal becomes 78 in our normal numeric system, which when decoded from ASCII and becomes the letter n. Great! You are now ready for the next chapter, URL encoding. So have you ever noticed those strange characters and web addresses? That's URL encoding in action. We encode special characters in URLs to prevent confusion and errors during data transmission. This not only ensures data integrity, but also guarantees that your web browser and the server are on the same page, sometimes quite literally. Let's break it down with some examples. Imagine you want to include a space in a URL. Instead of leaving it as is, we encode it as a %20 symbol. It might seem cryptic, but it's this level of clarity that prevents potential mishaps and keeps our data safe. Let's take a closer look at why we use the percent %20 symbol in URL encoding. Imagine you're searching for InfoSec Mastery on a search engine, and the URL might initially appear like this. Now here's the thing. URLs can't have spaces. Spaces will cause errors when going through the internet. So encoding steps in to help. After encoding, our URL transforms into this. Now, why percent %20? It might look like a secret code, but it's not that mysterious. Percent %20 is the ASCII hex representation of a space symbol. In the digital world, everything, including spaces, needs a specific code to be properly understood. So when the browser sees a percent %20 symbol, 
It knows to interpret it as a space. Last, but not least, we have the infamous Base64 encoding. It's a versatile encoding technique with various applications in web development. Keep in mind, Base64 encoding is not encryption, but it transforms data into a format that is easily transferable. Why is it easy? It's because it transforms any weird symbols you throw at it into a combination of letters, numbers, plus symbols, slash symbols, optionally, some equal signs in the end, and that's it. Imagine it as a language that web applications use to share information efficiently. From embedding images in HTML to storing complex data in cookies, Base64 encoding is the glue that binds different components of a web application. Here is why I said Base64 is not for encryption. Imagine a scenario where a web application uses a Base64 encoded token to manage user roles. We start by inspecting the HTTP request. We notice a cookie named user underscore token containing a Base64 encoded value. Let's decode this token to reveal its contents. Upon decoding, we find that the token value translates to role equals user. This means that our current user most likely has a standard role. Upon sending the request, the server checks the user's role based on the user token cookie. If the role is user, the server responds with unauthorized. Now, let's see how Base64 encoding enables us to modify the user role. We'll decode the token, change the role from user to admin, and encode it back. Thanks to this modified request, the server grants the user elevated privileges, believing them to be an administrator. This should be enough for this video. In the following video, we'll finally get to look at the first phase of a pen test, which is reconnaissance and enumeration. I will leave that video here in the end screen as soon as I upload it, so you can watch it if you're interested. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. If you appreciate the content, take a moment to subscribe to the channel to stay updated. And as always, happy pen testing.